Okay, so good afternoon and welcome everybody to my channel again. Welcome, Kesta. Um, Thank you so much. <laughs> so, as we battle with sitting at home, with all of the apprehension, yeah. for yeah. small businesses, for micro businesses, this is a time of trepidation. People are wondering what all of this means. What will happen mm -hmm. the morning after COVID? And Kesta, by the way, my friends, is a motivational speaker, he's a teacher, um, he's a preacher as well, but he also is a coach, a business coach. He is also a creative mind and plays a lot in that sector. And so I'm talking to Kesta about all of the things around setting new goals, around coming up after a depression, after everything has gone south for you as a small business owner. Um, Kesta, on your Facebook wall, I saw a very interesting quote <laughs> and it set me thinking and you said, when the fisherman cannot go out to fish, he meant yeah. his net. Yeah. So what does this mean for small business owners, micro business owners? The economy or the global economy is going bust. We hear that oil is in the minuses, okay, for, for the US. For us in Nigeria, it's actually dipping and we're going below $20 per barrel, which is crazy. So what happens to us as individuals who are playing in that very small sector of the economy? Um, even though it's the larger percentage of us in Nigeria who play in that sector, but it's it's a sector where it practically hands them out. So what happens to us at this time? Yeah, it's an unfortunate situation. By the way, thank you so much for having me one more time. Mm -hmm. It's my pleasure to be here. Um, to answer your question very directly, I would say, first of all, it's uh, not what anybody prepared for, but we are there. We're in the space already. So it's either you swim or you sink. And I'll suggest that you swim, uh, even if it means you have to learn it very late in life. Mm -hmm. um, swim would now require for us to put on our thinking caps. Because one of the problems I think that we have that I've always identified is the fact that we, we like the status quo. Mm -hmm. We like the traditional. We, we like it sound and easy. We don't like our nests to be ruffled a bit. But for the eagle or the eaglet to fly, the eagle, the mother eagle, does something that is very strange. If you, you, uh, you are quite familiar with the story, mm. he allows the eagle to go like a very wicked mother, at home would say. And, you know, the eagle struggles a bit, the eaglet struggles a bit, the eagle goes, picks, uh, picks the eaglet up, and leaves it again to go. I think that's what, that's a, that's a system or the process that we are going to go through right now as micro business owners. We need to think and think outside the box. We need to reprioritize ourselves. And one of the ways to do this that I think is very easy and I recommend that is the fact that you must have good relationships, viable relationships, because your finances will be stressed right now. A lot of things will go awry, as the case is presently. So you need support at this stage. But it's unfortunate for the person who was supported yesterday and was irresponsible with that support. It's difficult to go back there. So I'm saying number one, we must think outside the box or think like I would always recommend that there's no box at all. What else can I do? How else can I approach this business? If I was doing advertising, incidentally, I, um, I, I, I did a bit about advertising, um, a certified advert practitioner. If you, your advertising was traditional before, you have to think differently this time. Let more people know that what you are doing. If it has to be door to door, please go ahead and do it. We have to do something different. There has to be something different. And that's what I recommend. Something different. Let's approach this thing differently. It's, it's all well and good to talk about something different, you know. Um, and people are going to say, I've got to have something. It is the something that I don't have in my hands. So, I mean, here's an interesting 
situation. I live on Creek Road, or my business is on Creek Road. I live on Creek Road, where there is zero movement. And what I do is make hair for a living. What kind of disruption will get me on my feet? I mean, there's a lockdown. Nobody is going anywhere anyway. But what still, I'm in that part of town where nobody can even come to. What happens to me? How do, what am I going to do? I think you have helped me. You have helped me, I must confess. Thank you very much. You have helped me with that example you gave. You have helped me. Hairdresser, area on lockdown. Very simple. I give you a bit of my story as a teenager. When I had to do work a second time because I thought I was too brilliant, so I took a lot of things for granted. So I had to do work a second time. In the interim, you will see me dress up, dress very well. I carry a bag and I'm going around. And if you don't know, you think I, I was in a higher institution then. No, that wasn't the case. What was I doing? Somebody can learn from this story. I was a teenager. The clothes that I wore were as good as the ones you get at the present day oil market in Port Harcourt. Yes, but I washed them very well, ironed them, and you know, just go out. Inside that bag, I didn't have books. What I had was a blade or a packet of blade and comb. Now, what does that mean in those days? I was going from place to place, cutting people's hair as a barber. It didn't mean much. They didn't pay much. Some I did for free. Or I was going from house to house, from place to place, even go as far as taking transport to some places to do it. I had a friend, a, my father's friend, yeah, my father's friend, who just saw my enterprise. And he, he loved what I was doing as opposed to what other boys my age were doing at that time go to parties. I went to parties too. But I didn't want to wait for anybody to take the glory for my life. I didn't want to just become a problem to society particularly. I knew I needed one naira, two naira somewhere, and I could do this. And by the way, I didn't learn it from anywhere. It was just, you know, when you get really hungry, hunger is a motivator. When you get really hungry, you think faster. And so that came easy for me. With that bag in my hand, I just go around, I bab people. After barbing, at the end of the day, I have some money. Now, come into your scenario, hairdresser. Good and fine. Great. You have customers. Comes back to the same thing I was saying yesterday about relationship. How many people do you have? Maybe on your phone. You know as friends, you know as neighbors, you know as church members or whatever religion you belong to, that you have a good relationship with. That you can say, ah, you can see what is happening now. Lockdown, total lockdown. I have X, X number of children. They have to feed. I, I can't steal at this stage of my life. The least you can do is to help me. Let me come to your house and make, it's called home service. Ideally and ordinarily, that should cost more. So it's, it's, it's about the traditional thing. This is where I pitch my tent. This is where people know me. This is where they come to. This is all I've been used to. This is how I continue to do it. Sounds like as it was in the beginning, it's now, ever shall be, world without end. Amen. But That's what it sounds like to me. Forgive my insistence. Hmm? This person can't go out. You live on Creek Road. There is lockdown. You can't go out. If you go out, you're cutting the air of the security agents that will flog you back home. So how do you leave to go and deliver home service? No, but um, I know it's the, the lockdown is from 6 a.m., is that it, to 7 p.m.? What is it? That's well, what I heard. Really? Because people are having impossibilities even going out. They want to step out and they are, they are told you can't go but, eh? In that case, it's very wrong. So I don't go out, number one. I don't feed, number two. So how do they feed anyway? So there's a, there's a, there's a problem there. There's a problem. And there. that's really... There's a problem. problem. And the reason I paint the scenario is because more and more, that's what people are saying. That okay. for, for, for the informal sector, this 
COVID-19 comes with a humongous challenge, a challenge of a sector that rarely yeah. survives by the day and by the year. And they're saying, and so mm. back to my issue, the matter of fear, the matter of tradition, the fact of people saying, oh my goodness, yeah. what will happen to me? If you were going to be talking to me as my mm. business coach, facing what I face, um, what is it I can do in my little corner as I sit down and I'm dealing with this challenge? What can I do? That's on the one hand. But secondly, what can government do to ensure that there isn't a total collapse of this sector? Because truth be told, this is a sector that keeps this country going. The larger percentage yeah. of us yeah. play in that sector. So as an individual in this kind of problem, what can I do as I'm going through this so that I arrive on the other side of COVID-19 still alive? And then secondly, for governments, whether state governments or local governments, what are some of the kinds of initiatives that government can put out there to ensure that this sector doesn't totally collapse? Hmm, that's a huge one. Firstly, firstly, if there is no uh, movement, it's difficult for me to talk to you. I must concede, very difficult for me to talk to you if there is no movement. Yes. On the part of government, I think um, we consider some of these things. If we ref re referencing pre crude again, I, I would say to a large extent that I agree with what the government is doing. I agree with it a bit because um, all the while, you know, there was that restriction, there was that lockdown. Business was as usual in that whole area. Wow. It, the background sound, yeah? No, go ahead. Are you getting it? Yes. Okay. Now, business was as usual in that area, I must confess, as usual. And I was surprised that people were not just responding to it, but that's neither here nor there. But I would say to government that um, we should reconsider these things and not make it total as it were. But again, the people can be very difficult most of the time. However, to the individual, talking to you now as a business person, I would say that uh, somebody said to us many years ago, he said, the, what, for what you guys are doing right now, it's good. But there is one word I would like you to consider. He said, diversify. Now, we were teenagers at that time, we didn't understand that. But we understand it by default right now. It's time to diversify. It comes back to the same thinking outside the box or thinking that there is no box at all. What else can I do in the interim? What can I add to what I'm doing? Value chain. Now, I tell people that I write. When I'm not doing it, when I'm not doing it literally, I'm doing it verbally because I'm a dealer in words. I don't know about numbers. I failed maths twice. Yeah, but words. I love words. I know how to manipulate words. I know how to milk words. So if I'm not saying it, I'm writing it. If I'm not writing it, maybe I'm doing editing for somebody. Diversification. I'm breaking it all down. So again, it's time for us to look at this very well and see what else, what value, what else can I milk out of this beyond what I am known for, what I usually do. That's what I'll tell you first to think about. Thank you very much, Kesta. You know, I'm sitting again and I'm thinking back to the issue of mending nets. How do I yeah. mend my nets? Because, you know, let's go back to that fisherman parable. The fisherman is not going out to fish. So he's not going <laughs> out at all. His boat yes. is turned upside down. He is not That's going right. out at all. That's right. He's mending his net. So figuratively, now take that and position it for me. It means that this fisherman is on lockdown. How do I mend my net? What are those things that constitute net mending for business? Okay. You know, that little conversation I had with that um, young lady today centers around the same thing. Why I, I was careful not to bring her issues out into public domain without her permission. I know what she does. 
And I expected that at this time of asking, she would have had a bit of savings. Mm. So the fisherman, the fisherman knew that all the while he was going, you know, uh, fishing, the boat had a little bit of a problem, leaking, leaking somewhere and all that, but it was still, uh, there's going to be a lockdown. Let's put it at that. Even if you don't know, but you must have had some savings by the side. Some of the fish, fresh fish you brought would have been dried, you know, stuck somewhere and all that. That's what you survive on in the interim. Note that I always tell taxi drivers all the time, some of them, I meet them, I, I meet them, I, I know them around. I say, come, why do you not apply wisdom to what you do? They say, what do you mean? So I say, very simple. This is your tool of business. Every time your battery has an issue, why not fix the battery? Every time is your tire that has an issue, why not fix the tire? Because this is your tool. So you must allow your tool or make your tool very viable, good enough for you to do business. Every time you buy maybe five liters of fuel, and at the end of the day, it stops you on the road. So the time of uh, um, the lockdown is for you to go back, review, re re-strategize, look at things that were not going right, fix the boat, fix the net so that when you come back again, when you relaunch, because after this, there's going to be a relaunch. When you relaunch, you relaunch better. You relaunch bigger. You relaunch with purpose. It's the whole idea about that fisherman, the net, and the mending of the net. Absolutely. And that's what I think people should do. Mm -hmm. More skills. Get knowledge. Up your game. Because there are some young men and women who are doing stuff. You have not seen them yet. They are going to give you a run for your money. You can't keep doing the same things you are doing and expect to get a different result. It's not possible. And so as we sit down today as small businesses, I hear you saying to us, rethink strategy. Yes. Refocus. And retool. Retool. Begin to pick up new tools you can use to do business. That's right. So That's we think we strategize retool. Yeah. And that yeah, review. Our, yeah, review. So that would be our our net mending at this time. Thank you very much, Kesta. Um I, I, and there you have it. Thank you might be a, a micro business, a small business, and you're trying to figure it all out. And it is biting. I can tell you that I, I'm a small business owner myself, so I know how it's biting. But here's the thing. Let's spend our time rethinking our strategies. Is that stuff you've been doing that hasn't been working? Throw it out of the basket. You don't need it. Um, like someone said, if you've been doing a business where you cannot save 100 Naira, then hey, it's time to rethink whether that business should still stay. If you've been doing a business that is simply milking you um, and not bringing anything to the table, you want to think about it again. If there are elements of your business that have continued to be wasteful, as we have sat at home now, you can see that there are things in that business that can go. Whatever you need to outsource out If there are members of staff who are not as critical to you now, this is a good time to look at it and redefine the boundaries. Because if nothing else, COVID-19 is teaching us that there's a lot of fat we can cut out in our businesses. So cut out whatever fat you need to cut out. Have a clearer focus of where you're going. Sharpen your lenses mm -hmm. because COVID-19 is going to end and we've got to go back into business. And begin to think of diversification. What are the other things I can do? Other elements of your business that you might be able to incorporate. You know, so these are some of the things we should be doing. I'd like to thank everybody for, again, tuning in. And like I said, we'll keep having conversations on this channel. Um, and I hope that you enjoy it. And let me get your feedback. What do you want to see on this channel? It's going to be a channel where we're going to be spending time talking to people and spending time just re-energizing ourselves. Kester, thank you very much again for being part of this. And Thank you. Yeah, and you can be sure we'll bother you again and again.